the Mjolnir Powered Assault Armor slash C variant, colloquially known as the Close Quarters Battle or CQB Armor, is a variant of the Mjolnir Powered Assault Armor manufactured by Bewegliekeit Gustung System. Developed specifically to maximize survivability in Close Quarters Battle, and developed alongside the CQC variant, the CQB armor variant made use of innovations in testing, load simulation, and material science to develop stark improvements in ergonomic and kinetic energy dispersal over the standard Mjolnir variant. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and to this most detailed breakdown. Today we will be picking up and continuing a series I started with the Air Assault variant of Mjolnir nearly four years ago with every intention of continuing this into the future with other variants. Today we will be analysing the CQB variant of Mjolnir which has been implemented into various Mjolnir platforms. As this is a variant breakdown a lot of the base systems are identical to the various Mjolnir permutations. For full information on the individual generations and permutations of Mjolnir see the relevant breakdown as listed in the description, but for now we will just look at the CQB components and their functions as we give them the most detailed treatment. The Close Quarters Combat or CQP variant first entered service in 2525 as a permutation of the original Mark IV platform of Mjolnir. German based Bewegliekeit Gustung System put forward design proposals for both the CQB and CQC variant using data gathered from the Jericho 7 campaign with the intention of increasing survivability in close quarters engagements. The main components of the CQB armour set are the helmet, shoulders and chest attachments for the Gen 1 Mjolnir systems and backward compatible variants of the helmet for the Gen 2 and Gen 3 platforms. First we'll start with the Gen 1. The CQB variant of components specialise in improved survivability in close quarters engagements. The helmet contains all of the expected functional components that are standard across the entire Mjolnir range but with added features in the internal and external systems. Externally the helmet is quite obviously more armoured, the reinforced cross bracing across the helmet and the ridged armour plates above each temple are the result of intense and innovative stress testing on the Mjolnir helmet chassis. These plates are specifically engineered to be able to transfer kinetic energy and impacts through the armour and avoid direct transfer of this energy to the Spartan within. This is additionally assisted by kinetic dispersal layers within the plates themselves that likely employ a piezoelectric polymer, similar to the liquid metal crystal layers that Mjolnir utilises for movement, but instead functioning the opposite way. Whereby Mjolnir's liquid crystal is actively deformed by powerful microelectromagnetic fields to create movement, the kinetic energy dispersal layers are likely deformed or agitated by kinetic force which the material disperses as electrical energy. The permutation of Mjolnir is said to balance the kinetic dispersal against the momentum carried by the Spartan during combat. This again could be facilitated by the kinetic dispersal layer converting kinetic force into electrical current and then feeding this back into Mjolnir's movement systems augmenting the Spartan's movements and momentum with an additional energy dump. The helmet also claims to have improved field of view despite the visor actually having approximately the same average surface area to the base Mjolnir platform. The way in which this is likely achieved is through a more advanced visor system. On the cheeks of the helmet appear to be small lens like features. It is possible that these devices are in fact very small but high definition field of view imaging cameras. The feedback from these cameras could then be displayed via a VR overlay on the HUD allowing the Spartan to see through the cheek armour as if it wasn't there at all. The VR overlay feature that is already a standard practice across many other Mjolnir visors and the placement of these camera like devices alongside the suggestion of increased field of view suggests that to the wearer when the visor system is active it would grant them a near unimpeded field of view with possible capabilities to image and display a field of view superior to the human norm, allowing things outside of the wearer's normal field of view to be visible in their peripheral, possibly opening their horizontal field of view for both eyes from around 220 degrees 
up to around 270 degrees, meaning the only true blind spot is a 90 degree arc directly behind the wearer. The helmet can also be up armoured with an additional armour plating module manufactured by Materials Group designed to increase the protection factor particularly over the forehead of the helmet. This helmet is also compatible with the AN slash PCK221 Farndell which is an uplink coprocessor manufactured by the Watershed Division allowing real time access to the Office of Naval Intelligence Military Intelligence data vaults. The Farndell module resembles a cube and can be worn on either side of the helmet. Its adoption was once reserved for personnel employing the recon helmet during sensitive operations although has since been opened up to other permutations of Mjolnir helmets. The ANPZY990T Starlight optical sensor integrates directly with Mjolnir's visor drivers and intelligence analysis systems to provide real time situational updates to commanders. The PZY955SSA Willow remote sensor is dependable and natively compatible with older UNSC and CMA encoding formats manufactured by Calibs Defense Solutions and compatible with the Marine CH252 helmet. It can be employed alongside a command network module or a CBRN module, although it was previously available only to Beta 5 security teams and select army rapid reaction forces. It was also employed by ODSTs during the fall of Reach. By 2558, its use was adopted by Spartan 4 personnel employing the military police helmet, which also employs an integrated command network module. The shoulder pauldrons of the CQP variant address issues with range of motion and joint mobility. The original Mjolnir platform was without a doubt a marvel of technological innovation but it was on record that certain movements had to be performed in a certain way to avoid the Spartan injuring themselves or causing the armour to catch on itself. For example, the pauldrons of the base model Mjolnir Mark VI are positioned in such a way where raising the arms outwards to chest level results in the pauldron colliding with the torso armour over the shoulders. Raising one's arms above their head then would be impossible without driving the pauldron through this armour and down into the body of the wearer which should be noted is impossible, the armour is structurally limited in this regard to prevent such a thing happening. So in order to raise one's arms above the head the arms must first rotate forward then rolling the shoulders to allow the arms to stretch above the head. In this way the pauldron is moved clear of the body and rotates externally with the arm movement. In the case of the CQB variant where more intuitive movement and greater freedom of movement would be required to outmaneuver an opponent, the pauldrons are positioned much lower and are swept backwards, still providing substantial protection but being placed in a more anatomically convenient position, so raising one's arms to the side can now continue practically all the way through the natural motion. Furthermore, a movement mirroring the previously stated manner, rotating the arm forward first, rotates the CQB's large curved pauldron to a position where the user can lift their arms above their head and the pauldron rotates to partially obstruct easy view and access to the armpit where Mjolnir's thick armour plating does not cover and where this vulnerable area could be exploited by an opponent. The curved design of the pauldrons also maximises the chance of a glancing blow or deflecting a projectile impact minimizing the chance of a physical blow landing with full force and increasing the odds of an armor piercing projectile being deflected rather than penetrating as intended. The chest armor features three up armored components with the same kinetic dispersal layers built into the plates. They are locked together via a common locking brace at the center of the chest and features a combat knife positioned for easy retrieval. The CQB variant was field tested at the Special Warfare Center Essen in Deutschland and integrated feedback gathered from the Special Warfare Center in Seongnam in Korea, alongside battlefield datasets that informed future development of the permutation, eventually leading to its incorporation into the Mark VI series, and retroactive adaptations into the Gen 2 and Gen 3 platforms respectively, resulting in the CQB variant having integration continuity for the entirety of Mjolnir's development history. The upgraded Gen 1 CQB that most prominently featured as a helmet option for the Gen 2 and Gen 3 platforms of Mjolnir represent a distinct advancement on the original CQB design after decades of innovation and development on the part of Bubaglik, 
While maintaining the same form factor of the helmet, they added in reaction enhancers and predictive movement algorithms into the helmet's internal systems, centered around the connection between Mjolnir and the Spartan neural interface, likely based on the AI optimizations available to Spartans when paired with an AI companion, whereby, for example, Cortano optimized the connection between Chief and his suit on many occasions, one of the most prominent being maxing out his sprint speed to 129 km per hour or 80 miles per hour and boosting his reaction time to such a speed that he could dodge an air-to-surface Scorpion missile travelling at supersonic velocities, and even be able to reach out and swat it out of the air. The optimizations of connection between machine and mind that were used in this instance were likely used as the foundational basis of improvement for these systems to exist within the CQB variant, independent of the need to carry an AI. The predictive movement algorithms also likely prime the movement system of respective parts of the armor to the most likely next movement to be performed, resulting in a faster response time for the suit or even to a lesser extent begin interpolating the intended movement in advance and starting the action of motion before the Spartan is even fully aware of their decision to do so, adding to the concept of the user moving the suit on one level and the suit moving the user on another. Though the helmet is seen incorporation into the Gen 2 and Gen 3 platforms, the same cannot be said for the chest and shoulder pauldrons, which have otherwise been supplanted to respective models of up armoring and attachments which serve the same roles as the earlier CQB armor pieces, but with greater adaptability and modularity. That concludes our breakdown of the CQB variant of Mjolnir. The CQB variant of Mjolnir powered assault armor addressed some standing issues with the base model design, while simultaneously delivering innovations in armor design and integrated systems development that paved the way for more informed armor system designs, granted by battlefield data and extreme materials testing that ultimately culminate in armor platforms more suitable to protect the wearer from emergent threats that the original platforms may not be capable of withstanding. Remember, if you want to learn more about the baseline Mjolnir platforms these variants are compatible with, you'll find links in the description to the respective platforms as well as a link to the most detailed playlist or alternatively you can always pop over to the channel and give them a watch there. While you're there, subscribe and hit the little bell icon, that way when we put out our next Armour Most Detailed Breakdown, you'll be notified the second it hits the shelves. And let me know in the comments what variant you want me to cover next. Until then. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, Spartan10148, my Metark, Dylan, FalconX003, Kenwood, Irrefutable Justice, Leon, Neek and Remiz, my monitors, Alvin, Andrew, Brand, Brian, Cameron, Chris, Darian, Devon, Flaming Halo, Greenblood, Kyle, Legions Lost, Michael, Prophet Bear, Spartan and Wolf, my sub-monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my diligent enforcers, and all the other awesome people that have jumped aboard to support the channel over at Patreon. Another shout out to Todd Morrison, my transcendent YouTube member. And just one quick reminder to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord. Much love from Zero Zero. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>